legit looking. It's it's actually the uh, Cody Bellinger model. It's going to be way too small for you to read, but Bellinger 35 along the side. So it's like a glass um, ring. Yeah. yeah. And then you know how like your fingers swell a little as the day goes sometimes? Yeah. So at this point, I can't take it off. <laughs> right? I mean, with soap and stuff, I can, but it's, yeah. it's just locked on. So Dodgers World Camps. That's great. <laughs> At cool. I'm just trying to get this going okay. here in a second, guys. Uh, apparently, oh, yeah. Facebook's not working. So, oh, okay. Oh, Mine says live. Mine says we're live. I don't know if you know. <laughs> okay. Well, let me see what's going on here. It does say live on Facebook. Yeah. All right. Let me check on my phone. And yeah. See. See how it works there. Uh, Jared Kellenick. Yeah. Yes. Debut tonight. I'm, gl I'm glad he didn't show up for the Dodger series. We needed those wins. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are live here. We can have a little chat there. But yes, excited. That's why I got my stuff there. And just in time, uh, I, I had a friend hit the Mariners team store and they were selling jerseys worth 30 bucks. So I got an Ichiro and a Mitch Hanniger. I was really oh, excited wow. about that. That is nice. Can't beat that. Yeah, no, I, uh, considering that, you know, you, you, you're couldn't get rid of all the majestic athletic ones. I was like, those are my favorite. I, I can't stand yeah. having the swoosh on there. I know. Same. It's, it's terrible. It's so bad here. Um, I, I think if I ever have to buy a Nike one, I'm going to get one of those uh, uh, uni watch uh, pickers. And yeah. Pick <laughs> take out the stitches. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So cool. Well, I'll get us started here. Thanks for coming in. Uh, I am Jason. I am uh, the host of Ball Caps and Bagpipes. My my partner in crime is not here, John. He's uh, He can't do these late nights at the moment, but so he'll, uh, he'll join us at one point in time. But we have a great show tonight. We've got Mike, aka Mr. Shake. You get your card right there. Mike's joining us. And of course, we've had Jason from Heavy J Studios. And where would we be without Tad? Fellas, how are you guys doing tonight? Awesome. All right. Excited to be here. Cool. Oh, great. So uh, you guys had a, a fantastic idea. It, it's already kicked off now. Um, I want to hear more about the, the, the Josh Gibson 20 MVP card art competition. Can you guys please fill me in on what's going on with this? Dad, you want to maybe set the table and then we'll pick up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll say that, that uh, this campaign to me, uh, it brings goosebumps to my goosebumps because it's uh, a testament to the, the, the structure that we've built in this community, which um, allowed us to, you know, within, within literally two weeks, go from uh, Sean Gibson asking us, you know, hey, is there, do you think there's anything you guys could do to, to help us uh, make a little, you know, late, late inning rally here for the, the JG MV, JG20 MVP campaign? And uh, he asked the question and, and uh, it, it, it felt like, like a card art campaign would be really low hanging fruit for us. We put together, uh, you know, our steering committee to ask the question, what, what everybody thought. Um, Jason brought in Mike um, because we started talking about this card art idea. And uh, what, two weeks later, here we are. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just <laughs> add a, a plug for Mr. Shake, rookie of the year. Uh, for NLB Mart. Um, in, in my book, Mr. Shake is the guy that has the Midas touch and the best ideas. And so it felt to me like that was our missing link to take this thing from awesome to just off the charts, ass kicking awesome. And so uh, anyways, I don't know if there's like FCC Scotland or something that's going to like, you know, bleep us out, but uh, I'll, I'll try to watch the language from here. No, no, no. You can swear all you want. You know, we, we freely throw around the C word around here, which is a friendly term, yes. but it's, <laughs> we, yeah. it's not safe for TV though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. We, we, we've got a family audience uh, viewing at the moment, I think. But uh, at any rate, you know, what, what we did after kind of a quick meeting with the steering committee was we put out a call to the card artists in our immediate circle. And I think the goal really was, you know, four weeks of four each, maybe 16 artists participating. And we're now above 60, six zero. It's like 62 or something like that. And literally every day, somebody else gets in touch and they're like, oh, yo, can I still get in? And the answer so far has always been yes. I don't know if that's forever. So we have roughly one to two cards dropping every single weekday for nine weeks. 
We've got scoring that's based on Twitter engagement, retweets and, and likes and things like that. Tad is building the website to support weekend voting for all the cards and then the votes. Uh, the fan vote kind of balances out with the likes and retweets in a very complex mathematical formula called addition. And at some point, Michael will have to fill us in on the final structure because um, I keep getting it confused. I don't want to give misinformation. But at some point, some cards advance to the Tournament of Champions. And one of the things we've been doing in the background is lining up celebrity judges. And I'm going to say there are some, some pretty big name judges already lined up, and I think several others uh, that are just waiting to say yes, you know. Uh, they, they don't want to seem desperate, so they're going to write back in like three days. I think. Yeah. yeah, Mike, Mike, what's uh, what's the Tournament of Champions and what are you seeing so far? Yeah, so uh, we have, um, like Jason said, nine weeks and uh, one card is going to end up advancing each week. Uh, at the end, the celebrity judges that we put together are going to give out, I think it's three golden tickets. So what that basically means is that people who didn't advance to the Tournament of Champions uh, all of the cards will be put up and then the celebrity panel will look and pick uh, via vote their top three favorite cards and they'll all get thrown into the tournament of champions. What that basically is a, is a bracket style challenge uh, that will be based off of votes that will be hosted on the uh, website. And then once it get, gets down to the final four, we're going to throw things over completely to the celebrity judges and have them uh, pick their top three and crown, crowning the winner. That's amazing. So I know who a couple of the judges are. Is, is there any big names that you would like to join in that we don't know about? Ooh. Ooh. See, I, I know we all like Project 2020 and Project 70. Is there any artists there we, we feel like we maybe should reach out to and go, okay, hey, like we're doing this. Uh, uh, we've had Blake Jamison on before. He was quite helpful for us there. Uh, we know F Dot's a fan. We've a bunch of us talked to F Dot there. Um, is there anyone we're missing? Like Snoop? Anyone got a contact for Snoop? <laughs> <laughs> we're waiting for that phone call back. We left a couple <laughs> messages with him. So, <laughs> right. I, I will say, in, in terms of the project, we do have DJ Ski confirmed. That was something Mr. Shake took care of with his Midas touch. We also have Lauren Taylor confirmed, right? Uh, we'll probably reach out to Blake. We'll probably reach out to F. I'm thinking about maybe Alex Pardee would be a fun one and maybe oh, Distorted, man. right? Um, so I will say this too. I don't know if anybody was on the Hall of Fame panel today featuring Dave Parker and Dave Jordan being interviewed about Cobra's autobiography. But in the q and I got to ask Cobra who his favorite Negro leaguer is and guess who he said? You said Josh? He said Josh. And so I am going to begin my campaign to see if we can draft Cobra as a judge, but also to do maybe one of those little MVP banners that uh, that we do sometimes for, uh, like we have the Ron Say and Reggie Jackson. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, Cobra, Cobra was like, well, I got to go with the guy who hit the hardest. And I'm pretty sure that was Josh Gibson. Oh, that's absolutely amazing. That's really cool that he was able to answer your question on there. There, and I think he'd be an awesome person to be on a part of the panel here. Yes, and and you know he's he lives in the Cincinnati area, but obviously he's almost synonymous with Pittsburgh baseball, right? So it's kind of like if if you made your Pittsburgh Mount Rushmore, right? Um, people could quibble, but I'm going to combine how good they were with kind of like fan favorite status and and just like super cool and lots of swag. Right. I mean, you're going to have probably I'm going to put Parker Clemente. Josh Gibson. Right. Uh, bad to do this on the spot, but um, <laughs> the point is, yeah, Parker and Josh, they're kind of both on the same on the same Rushmore in my book. Maybe McCutcheon or, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, wait, Parker Gibson. Sorry, Stargell and Clemente. That's Stargell, where I went. Yeah. Stargell. yeah, I apologize, Pops. OK. I know I'm sitting there racking my brain now going, all right, what, what pirates are they? Jose Lean did not make that list, unfortunately. <laughs> cool. So where are you guys posting your stuff? Are you guys posting it on your personal Twitter accounts, your, on your uh, Instagram accounts, or uh, how can people get involved and find out more about it? Mike, you want to take it? Yeah, so we're doing, we're running the contest primarily through the uh, MLB Marketplace Twitter account. 
Um, but we're also kind of using the website too for the voting. So every day around noon, the cards will be post posted and have been posted on, on the Twitter account. And then um, we're retweeting and sharing all the artists that are involved. Like Jason said, we have over 60 artists. Uh, so they're all retweeting and sharing it. Um, but the, the voting through the week is done via Twitter likes and, and retweets. Uh, and then on the weekend, after we have the um, Twitter contest settled, we're going to have a poll on the website and we're going to direct people to the website to have the voting there. And when you guys are doing the card art, can you choose any card? Do you have a Josh Gibson card that you do for? Because I know there are some Josh Gibson cards out there. I have a 82 Donner's King Josh Gibson card that I'm looking at. Ah, maybe I should go there. That's the one. <laughs> exactly. That's the one. And I'm going, well, I, I know I have to, I might have to cut mine up and see what I can do, even though I'm absolutely rubbish at all this. But uh, uh, can anyone enter with anything they want? Yeah, so the cards, the cards don't have, I mean, we obviously wanted to feature Josh Gibson. Um, but the thing that's interesting, I think, is that there's a limited number of Josh Gibson cards that have been produced. So with over 60 artists, um, some of the artists like myself and Heavy J primarily <laughs> create physical cards, right? But we also have digital uh, artists in there too. So people like Heavy J and myself who have to cut up different cards that exist, there's a limited amount. Um, so we wanted to represent... Um, kind of the message and the legacy of Josh Gibson and the idea that we're trying to um, persuade the writers to vote for renaming the MVP award after him. But I think there's some room for creativity in there. Um, I, I was, I was actually thinking, you know, of some of the, we, the, the cool thing is that Sean Gibson has given the artist access to a lot of photographs that aren't really found out on the internet. Um, so he has a lot of really cool photographs and not only photographs, but some documents, some newspaper clippings and things like that. So it's going to be really exciting to see what some of the artists come up with um, beyond just the traditional physical baseball cards that are out there um, in terms of, you know, sometimes maybe creating their own images and depictions of Josh, or maybe even using some of the quotes that some of the famous players have said about Josh um, and featuring the quotes or like heavy J did today with a poem, right? He, he had a, um, used the physical, that Don Russ card that you mentioned and then added a poem that, that he created, which was really, really moving. So, um, you know, there's a lot of room for creativity. And uh, as, long, as long as you're again, kind of trying to promote the legacy of Josh Gibson, uh, that's what we're looking for. I'm, I'm gonna add to that though, um, because it's true. There isn't a huge variety of physical baseball cards of Josh. So one of the advantages, you know, Mr. Shake and I both went week one. So, you know, the good deal is we put our card out and nobody's like, oh, that's kind of the same thing that other guy did, right? By about week six or seven, I think the, the ones using the physical cards are gonna feel a little bit like they got scooped, but there are always ways to be creative. And obviously the digital artists can do all kinds of things. Um, but yeah, I will say we didn't go week one to sort of have the easiest job. We went week one because we we knew we had a really quick turnaround for the start of the tournament and we didn't wanna impose really severe deadlines on a bunch of other folks and, and maybe dissuade them from entering. So we kind of took the, the hot seat, but yeah, it, it does mean uh, we kind of got our pick of the cards. I mean, yeah, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. Now, uh, Mike, do you wanna tell us about your card there? I mean, it was just on display there. So yeah. where, where's the photo from? I said, it's not a... a I said, I, 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 I'm a junk era guy. So I'm basically anything from 85 to like 92. This is my sweet spot. So like all these cards that come out later, I'm just like, I don't know about anything about them. So uh, when I see something like that, I'm very curious where the card's from. I know there's been some of the early cards produced later. I just haven't um, caught up to them yet. So. To be honest, I don't even remember. I was so excited. So what happened was Heavy J actually was kind enough to send me uh, a bunch of Josh Gibson cards. And as soon as I got them in the mail, I was so excited. And I saw this one image and I have my card here. Um, I don't even remember. Heavy J, do you remember what, what card that is from, Josh? So there, there are a couple of cards that you that, that image, right? photo. So off the top of my head, it's yeah. not clicking. And then, of course, you added... Right, the 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 special Don Russ is that 1990? 91. Yeah, 91. 91, yeah. 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 And the thing that's tough for, for my type of art is again being physical cards and cut up, you can kind of see here. It's it's more of a collage style, is that I try to so I covered up the player. I don't even remember whose original card this was. It might have been 
Kirby Puckett. I don't remember, but I tried to use my green paint markers to blend in the background. And so, you know, there's no digital aspect at all to, to this, um, which is something I kind of pride myself on with my cards. And then, uh, you know, I had to hand create this grazed logo. But uh, other than that, it's back. Very cool. Yeah, no, I, I, I was doing some research. I think we're going to have a, a UK one, but I think I'm going to have to supply the cards to everybody so they could do their own and get all about maybe about 10 people doing that. But have you come across, was it 2007? This is a home, home runs in history with Josh Gibson. Have you seen those cards? Are those so, the ones that have kind of the big number and there's like a whole bunch that kind of all look the same, but one will say like 79, one will say 100. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Those... I feel like for the style of art that I do, there's kind of not enough Josh and just a big giant number. So I tended to avoid those, but I think somebody more creative than me, or you know, maybe using part of that with part of something else could do something super cool. Like one, one of the things that would be awesome, it was actually what I was trying to do, but I didn't have a good enough Buck Leonard card to use, right? So backstory, last year, I spent two months making Josh Gibson cards to raise money for the Josh Gibson Foundation. And so in a way, I sort of felt like been there, done that with almost every idea I had, right? I wanted to do something fresh, right? And we are, as the NLB marketplace, also great friends with the Buck Leonard Association. So my original vision was a Josh Gibson, Buck Leonard, Thunder Twins combo card. That's what I really, really, really wanted to do. But the Buck Leonard cards I had just, you know, you, sometimes you just need, you know, the sizes of the players to be comparable or whatever. I couldn't pull it off, but I think if somebody had one of those home run numbered cards, they could probably, if they found the right Buck Leonard, it'd be an awesome pairing. Like I, I would, I'll say it right now on, the, on this webcast, hold me to it. If somebody does a Thunder Twins Buck Leonard Josh Gibson, I will buy it. I mean, you know, if it, it, don't, don't gouge me, but I mean, if it's fairly priced, <laughs> I want uh, how about you work I'll a trade say, out say, for it? <laughs> I'll say I'll say this guys. Next year is the 50 year anniversary of Josh and Buck going into the Hall of Fame. Yes. So look out for Project Thunder Twins next year. Yes. <laughs> People heard it here first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that one's going to be really fun. That one's going to be really fun. Things. And the thing that's been really cool for me is we we knew that that was coming. That's been on the radar for several months now um the way the way that this campaign came down um where you know it's just sean saying hey what do you think we can do and then us just like firing everything back up um that has me really excited for next year for for the thunder twins campaign i think that that's going to be a special campaign one of the things i gotta say that's that a priority for me is to make sure that people understand who in the heck Buck Leonard is too. Um, inducted into the Hall of Fame on the same day as Josh Gibson. Um, so, uh, you know, there's a, there's a big discrepancy and, and, you know, having, having personally you know, done so much work with Buck over the last several months now and kind of knowing that, that, you know, his name recognition isn't way up there, but now seeing this Josh campaign happen and see the fervor, you know, that everybody has just scrambling to support Josh um, is fantastic. But I, I, I can't lie and say that it's also not a little bit disappointing to see firsthand this big discrepancy between Josh and Buck. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited uh, to, to, to put some energy, more energy into, into Buck and Josh next year. That's fantastic. And, and of course, I mean, our connections to those two players, right, through Brian and Rose and obviously through Sean, like you couldn't imagine nicer people who, who really take, uh, you know, they take the position they're in and they entirely try to turn it into helping others, right? Um, I guarantee you, if I were related to any Baseball Hall of Famer, I don't know. 
I think I would just be wearing a shirt that's like, you know, <laughs> hey, William, he was my great, great grand uncle's brother's cousin. You know what I mean? Like, like, uh, I think I wouldn't be able to get over myself, man. We're I, just I, walking around with their World Series ring on, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd be making cards of myself or something like, you know what I mean? But, but they're, they're, they're really humble and they're just so committed to helping others. And so it's, it's really amazing to me. I mean, for me, when I think of Buck Leonard and so Tad, I'm so glad you brought him up and I'm so glad that, that you, you know, you're looking at what we're doing as a way to really not only help the association, but to boost Buck Leonard's profile. I make no distinction between Buck Leonard and Lou Gehrig, right? In terms of the sort of upper echelons of baseball, right? Um, you know, maybe Buck was better, maybe Lou was better and maybe we'll never know, probably we'll never know, right? But to me, he, it's, it's that level of elite and it's crazy. Like I went on eBay and I bought a beautiful photo of Buck Leonard autographed for $30. And I thought that's crazy because, wow. right? Lou Gehrig, would, what would that cost me, 10,000? So yeah. it's just, it's a bizarre thing. And obviously as a collector, you know, it's nice when a player you like is affordable, but I'd like to think over time, right? Future generations, you know, uh, his cards, whatever, you know, will be the equivalent of Gehrig. Um, you know, just like we sometimes equate Josh Gibson and Ruth, although in this case, we do believe Josh Gibson was better. Um, yeah, but I, I am so happy to be part of something that's boosting Buck's profile. That means a lot to me. Yeah. So it's interesting you brought that up. So you think with the Negro League stats being legitimized shortly, if I understand correctly, uh, do you think that would actually uh, boost everybody more and go, okay, you know what? Uh, now the, the profile is bigger, more people are interested into it now, and, and, and we're all collectors here. Do you think that's going to increase the value there? I'm going, okay, well, maybe I should be looking at trying to get their memorabilia really now Why I have an opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, one of the things with Josh and Buck Leonard is that unless you're talking about absolute rarities on the sort of, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars scale, there aren't contemporary cards of them that you're going to be able to pick up. Right, you can pick up things from uh, about yeah. the 70s and later, right? <laughs> you know, uh, but you're not going to find, you know, a 1932 Josh Gibson card or something like that, right? They, they're just uh, there was there was a postcard uh, or a photo from Arkansas from right around that time, I believe. But again, hundred thousand dollars or whatever, right? So, um, but. <laughs> I can but, barely afford Project 70, let alone that. <laughs> I, I will just give one case study, right? So it was such an exciting thing. Like when those articles came out last December, right? you know, MLB to, you know, confer major league status on the Negro Leagues and, you know, all these things. And, and okay, so you started seeing these things about like, instead of Ted Williams being the last major leaguer to hit 400, it might now be Artie Wilson, who I think did it in 1948, right? So I read that article. And I have like a nice baseball card display of maybe the, the top hundred players of the last hundred or so years uh, in, my, in my memorabilia room, right? And I thought to myself, you know what? Um, what's my excuse for not having a card of Artie Wilson in that display, right? So I went online. I bought like a 1950 something, you know, mother's cookie or remar bread or something, Artie Wilson in like magnificent shape. Like it looks mint from six feet away, right? It's, it's probably like a PSA six or something like that, but it looks mint, right? Uh, so I think I paid like 70 bucks, right? And there were a few, I took my pick. Literally two days later, you could not buy one. Like, I think if you go now and you do searches, you'll either find nothing or that same card would be like $500. In other words, you know, people are starting to see which players that maybe they'd never even heard of, right? Or, or were just kind of like, oh, Artie Wilson, who'd he play for? Did he ever make the big leagues? What was he in Negro Lear? You know, just really faint recollections. Um, they are moving up. Some of you have maybe seen that the guys from Baseball Reference have dropped these sneak previews, right? And this is Baseball Reference. This is where fans go to look at stats, right? They previewed their single season slugging record. Josh is number one, okay? Mule Settles, Negro Leagues, number two. Chino Smith, Negro Leagues, number three. Josh Gibson, number four. And then I think you finally get to Barry Bonds at number five. So the point being, and, and Josh Gibson's all over it. Oscar Charleston's in the top 20 twice, right? These are going to be the stats. It's not going to, you know, in future generations, they're not going to say, oh, hold on, let me separate these apart and just look at the white players. These are the stats, right? A generation from now, wow, 
look who the greatest sluggers were of all time. Well, Josh Gibson, Oscar Charleston, Buck Leonard, uh, you know, Mule Suttles and Chino Smith, who I think a lot of even baseball fans couldn't tell you who Chino Smith was. But all of a sudden, by virtue of where they're going to land in the record books, fans are going to say, hey, hold on. I need to learn about this guy. And it's not a big step for collectors to say, ooh, does he have any cards? I might need to get a card of his. Absolutely. So I say, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that, I'm a big stats guy. And that's how I learned about playing video games, reading the back of cards and everything there. And I think not having that there probably didn't learn about it. Because, again, you know, it took a while to, you know, step it out. Now we have information so readily available. People go, well, who is this person? I've never heard of this person there. And so you can actually find this information there. So probably not our generation, but my children's generation should know more about things and at least can find this information out there. So, um, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's going to be interesting. People go, oh, go, well, who does own the slugging record? You know, and who is this guy? And then be able to find out more information about them. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's fun. I mean, uh, you're slowly seeing in there, like, uh, I, somebody has kindly gifted me an Xbox. I have MLB 21, and you get Jackie Robinson on there. So, I'm really rubbish at this because I don't play baseball games, but I'm assuming there must be other Negro leagues that pop up there. I don't, I don't know if you guys play games at all or not, but uh, it, it's slowly making its way into culture outside of Jackie Robinson. Yeah, no, I don't. I haven't played in a while. Uh, you know, I... Uh... Try, try to stay away i get a little bit too into it so <laughs> i've been resisting up to this point but it's tempting but no that's absolutely right i mean i teach ninth grade for full time and a lot a lot of the kids that aren't really it really really into baseball even some of them that really are into baseball with the negro leagues it's kind of unfortunately uh, out of sight out of mind and i think once these records go into the book um and once you know like you said, they can go online and when they type in, you know, who has all time slugging percentage and they see some of these names, they kind of will start to, to, again, become more part of uh, people's thoughts instead of an afterthought, which I think is incredible. Now, I was going to ask you guys, now, obviously, it's a, it's a late night for me, no matter what. Yeah, so Mariners games, three o'clock in the morning. I don't get to watch a lot of games there. And I, I, usually I see they're losing, so I don't bother checking, watching the game on replay the next day there. But do you guys ever see that stuff referenced on in the games you guys watch now? I, I mean, you guys probably watch more baseball than I do. Besides Tad, Tad doesn't watch baseball anymore. How much? I once in a while, once in a while, not not too often, but uh, you know that's kind of part of why we're doing what what we're doing, and um, you know I think that with uh, as Jason calls it the summer of Josh, right? And as more of these discussions come up, once the records officially go into the book, I think we'll start seeing more and more of it. Yeah, I, I can I can say uh, so. This is one of the nice things about living two thousand miles from your team, right? So as a Dodger fan in Chicago, I've been able to watch almost every single Dodger game this whole season. And I don't think I've heard a single reference to the Negro leagues yet. Last year or the year before, I feel like it tended to come, you know, with things like, you know, throwback Jersey Negro leagues night, or, you know, Jackie Robinson day, maybe passing reference to the idea that he came through the Negro leagues with the Kansas city Monarchs. So there hasn't been a lot. I do know, I think it was 2020 yeah it would have been 2020 I think Sean himself was interviewed on a Braves telecast if I'm remembering that right but I would I would hope right that part of getting into the record books just makes it you know less of a novelty topic to bring up you know to fill space and more of you know if you're talking about the great players these guys are absolutely on the list right it's it's not an alternate topic it's it's well, if we're talking about a guy that's hitting mammoth home runs, we can compare him to Josh Gibson, right? Um, it doesn't have to be a special Negro Leagues day, you know, to make a comparison like that. But yeah, so far I would say not much, unfortunately. No, unfortunately. The, go ahead, Def. Yeah, I was going to say the, the other night we were talking with Sean and we were kind of going through and filling out our content calendar. We were, there's a, a few... Uh, Negro Leagues tribute nights um, that we talked about and put on the on the calendar. One is with the Johnstown, Pennsylvania Mill Rats, which I think is an independent league team. Um, that one is coming up on uh, June 5th. Uh, there's another one, the Washington Wild Things on July 10th. Um, with, that's got, 
one that one actually is going to include a Josh Gibson bobblehead. So if you're in the Washington area, Washington Wild Things on July 10th, uh, Negro Leagues Tribute Night with the Josh Gibson bobblehead. Um, it 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 it's starting. It, it you know definitely last year there was with the 100 year anniversary there was all kinds of of activities planned that got scuttled, um, but nonetheless it was still a, a, a a topic of conversation throughout the year, but it is going to be really interesting to see, right? You know, um, you know, once, you know, the, the, the hoopla dies down, will it stay part of the conversation? Um, and certainly when you go to the record books in just a couple of months, I think, and, um, and, you know, look up the names, it, it's going to be completely unavoidable. So that's, that is, is the cool thing. Like you said, Jason, <clears throat> we didn't necessarily grow up knowing these names because they weren't front and center for us, but going forward, they will be front and center um, in those record books. So it's, it's significant. Well, that's it. Uh, that's, you know, I think we're going to see more and more of it there. I said, I think, you know, the museum missed last year completely so there's not much you can do about there but i'm hoping to see more and more as the season progresses and uh like i said i think there's the uh, kansas city's having a throwback night there um but uh, the visiting team can't wear the uniforms because nike can't produce them quick enough or something like that which... yeah shame on you nike shame on you for crying <laughs> out loud you gotta be i mean kidding. you gotta be kidding me nike you I, could I, you I, could you could the, nike has the capacity to outfit every major league team with new uniforms tomorrow come on nike shame on you personally i think ebbett shields finals could produce those they could put a logo on it <laughs> and it would be just the same i can't imagine I, them saying no to that but you know so be it it, it is what it is uh uh, uh nike's more interested in more interested in doing those city edition uniforms than anything else at the moment shame on you nike Oh, that's right. I, I haven't liked Nike for, for 20 years, but that's for my own reasons. And, and, and Jason might know why <laughs> I don't like Nike. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't bought anything Nike in 20 years because of a rivalry, so I can't go there. <laughs> they, they, they have a special hold over you. with your dollars. Yeah. So, um, cool. So, you guys do the campaign. So, what's the goal of the campaign here? I think we've kind of, we, we, I know we're bringing uh, information to the Josh Gibson uh, MVP. Uh, Tennessee, but uh, what are you guys trying to do with it? Are you trying to reach out to people? Uh, is there, uh, you know, more people outside the, the card art market out there? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think say this. We're, we're, sorry, what we're, what we're trying to do is influence the vote. Um, we're absolutely trying to influence this vote. Um, and, and we're trying to do that both directly and indirectly. Um, we want more people to take the time to go to jg20mvp.com, which is a beautiful website produced by the Gibson Foundation's media agency, and, um, and just learn about the case for Josh Gibson for MVP. Uh, take the time to look up this, the kinds of statistics that show you that, uh, what was it from, I think, uh, uh, just a few years after Jackie Robinson broke in, there was a, you know, a stretch of 10 years where, where like seven or eight of the MVPs were nine former nine, Negro nine, leaders. Nine Eleven, Right. So, yeah. I mean, come on, you know, the, the statistics that are there don't lie. You know what, what we just know, um, you know, it, it, you, you can't deny. So we're, we're absolutely trying to, to influence public opinion uh, because, you know, the more that the public clamors for something like this, the more pressure the BBWA is going to feel to make the right decision here. Um, there's, as, as we understand it, there's, there's at least three names being considered to rename the trophy. All, all worthy names. The first is Branch Rickey, um, who, you know, signed Jackie Robinson. The second is Frank Robinson. Um, the first uh, man to win the MVP awards in both leagues, um, and also an African American would be a great statement. Frankly, when I first heard Frank was was listed, I'm like, you know what, that that makes sense. But then when you really stop and you consider Josh Gibson, how many MVPs would that man have won had he been playing in the major leagues back then? Um, there's no question in my mind that 
that uh, we would think a lot less of Babe Ruth had Josh Gibson played in the major leagues. So anyway, yeah. we're trying. We're that trying to. Influence, yeah, go ahead, Tim. We're trying to influence the vote. We're trying to influence public opinion. Yeah, and and, and I think Sean um, brought up this point too that it's it's even though we're trying to do that, right? It's bigger than just Josh. That's the whole other aspect of it. I think that's really resonates with me is that, yeah, we want Josh Gibson. Yeah. He was um, MVP caliber. Definitely. But the uh, over 3000 Negro league players, right. Or tended to be kind of forgotten about uh, to, to most people. And, you know, by naming the MVP award after Josh Gibson, I think not only does it kind of bring his accomplishments uh, and memorialize what he did, but memorialize what everyone else did, uh, that played in the Negro Leagues. I want to just uh, add one thing, which was interesting. I was doing a little bit of research for an article I was putting together, and we kind of jumble and sometimes uh, transpose the order of some of these things into something that feels more logical, right? But as I was doing my research, I mean, I, kn I knew the MLB announcement was last December. That was like, that made a huge splash. And I looked up the Bob Nightingale article in USA Today that made the case for Josh for the MVP trophies. And you'd think, oh, that would have been a couple of weeks later or something like that. But no, that was actually in November. It was a month before the MLB announcement. And of course the comments or the criticism of why would we put Josh on the trophy was he didn't even play in the major leagues, right? Well, effective one month later, MLB recognizes Josh Gibson as someone who played his entire career in the major leagues, other than I think a quick trip to Mexico and, you know, a little bit of winter ball in, in Puerto Rico, which, you know, a lot of players do. So, uh, so he's absolutely a major leaguer. Right. And I would say with Frank Robinson, because I agree, like when I saw Frank Robinson's name, I'm like, Hey, that's actually a great choice too. Right. But we think of Frank Robinson as the only man to win the, uh, you know, the trophy in both leagues. But the thing is now there's like nine leagues, right. Or if you count some of the earlier stuff in, you know, uh, 19th century baseball or whatever, there's more than nine. But the point is nobody won it at all nine, right? If you look at Josh's career, would he have won it in more than two leagues? I think he would have, right? But I would also say that Frank had the honor of receiving two MVP trophies with his name on them. Josh, obviously, other than the one that uh, Sean does his occasional hobby flex with, the Puerto Rican 41-42 MVP trophy. You know, Josh, uh, you know, not the same, right? So getting his name would really be like a first for Josh. So, uh, but it's important. I think, you know, part of what we're doing with this campaign as we're hopefully influencing the boat and public perception is also, I would say combating some misinformation, right? If somebody says to me, why would it be Josh Gibson? He never played in MLB. I'd say, no, actually you're wrong. According to MLB, he did, right? From 1931 to 45 or whatever it is, right? Um, so, yeah, I think putting out a lot of good, accurate information, right? Um, one of the other big sources of misinformation is people say, how do we know what he did? We don't have the stats. Well, gosh, over the last 30 years, believe it or not, an incredible team of researchers, I'll call out Larry Lester, I'll call out uh, Scott Simkus, I'll call out Gary Ashwell, there's a few others too, who just did an amazing amount of work. We have the stats. And then people say, no, you don't, because Josh only has 180 home runs. I thought he hit 800 and they don't get it. They think somehow most of his career is invisible and it's not. It's that the Negro League season was shorter. It included a lot of non-league and exhibition and that's where about three quarters of his home runs were hit because that was about three quarters of the games. We have the stats, right? It's all there. Um, so a lot of the excuses people make or the criticisms they make, yeah, there's the trophy. Um, they're actually based on uh, misinformation, right? So I hope over the course of the campaign, we'll have a chance. And obviously Sean always, you know, does what he can to correct the record. We'll have a chance to help people understand, guess what? There's actually some things you're just wrong about, right? This is factual stuff. We have the stats. He was a major leaguer according to MLB. So anyways, and he would have won so many MVPs because also if you look at the NL and AL MVPs from about 1930 to 1955 or so, so many catchers like that yeah. was kind of the go-to position sort of like NFL quarterback back then you wanted your catcher right so anyway okay off my soapbox that was that was a long <laughs> no no it's absolutely I mean we're doing this to help influence a vote but uh the one thing you guys didn't touch on is who are you trying to influence it with 
I know that's what I was trying to get out of you guys there. So but is there a particular subset of people we're trying oh. to reach in particular? <laughs> yes. We are uh, looking at you, Baseball Writers Association of America. Um, since uh, what year um, the Baseball Writers of Association of America have voted on and, and presented the trophy and was it was them last year that voted to remove Kennesaw Landis's name from the trophy. So um, rumor has it that they may be ready to, to vote um, to, to put a new name on that uh, over the All-Star break. So, um, you know, we're, we're trying to be respectful. Uh, you know, we know that there's some uh, there's there's great candidates like we just talked about, but but uh, you know the 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 time is it has never been better to right some wrongs, and and that's what they have an opportunity to do here. Um, I think uh, I'll pull it up here in just a second, but you know one of the uh, boy, I like to say it's like it's uh, they've they've got the opportunity here to do the right thing, um, and. Uh, and, and uh, we're hoping that they do that. So we'll, we'll, we're gonna try and you know, be respectful, but also try and nudge them uh, you know, in, the, in, the, in the right direction, we, we believe. Do you think by any chance they'd actually have a public vote or like they do with the Hall of Fame and we'd actually get the <laughs> right, writer's votes in there so we actually could track it? Cause that, that'd be really interesting. Yeah, it would. It'd be neat to have a fan vote too. Yeah. yeah I, would, I, will, I will say this, there are a few writers that I've reached out to personally and, you know, let them know what we're doing and everything like that. And there seems to be some enthusiasm, right? Um, I don't know that there's anything we're doing with our campaign where let's say somebody is a really staunch supporter of Branch Rickey's name on the trophy, right? I don't know that anything we're doing is going to change their mind, but I do think, oh, there we go, do the right thing. That is, <laughs> I love that. Um, I do think as some of the writers vote, right? They might think to themselves, Josh Gibson, gosh though, do fans today or the players who might win this award even know who he is, right? Well, if there's been like a three month long media blitz, right? Josh Gibson <laughs> murals about to be done in a couple of weeks. Tops yeah. is put out with, uh, with F. Uh, May 24th, a Josh Gibson MVP baseball card as part of their set, right? If, it's, if there's just a lot around, it kind of helps people on the fence or undecided say, you know what, man? There's a lot of energy and enthusiasm behind Josh Gibson. You know, what have we seen from the Branch Rickey people or the Frank Robinson people? You know, I haven't personally seen anything. Maybe the writers have. But, you know, the point is, I think sometimes just seeing that, hey, actually, people out there care about this and people out there are really strong advocates for Josh. I think that could help with people undecided. Yeah, that's the other part of this whole campaign is this truly is a grassroots campaign. Um, yeah, it's being organized by a couple of groups and kind of facilitated uh, through both NLB Marketplace and the Josh Gibson Foundation. But like Jason said, we have over 60 artists who that number is increasing by the day. And they're really, really passionate. I mean, I've seen a little sneak peek behind the scenes of some of this artwork, and it's absolutely incredible. And it's more than just, you know, this is Josh Gibson, this is a card. You could tell that there's a lot of passion behind the, the subject matter. And, uh, you know, I shouldn't be talking up my opponent's card here, but Jason's card today uh, is a prime example of that. You know, he wrote a beautiful poem that if you really sit and just take a minute to read the poem and think about what it means, uh, you know, it really, really echoes the whole whole idea that we're trying to push. So as much as this might seem like a um, kind of orchestrated PR push by the uh, Josh Gibson Foundation, it's that, you know, I can speak from experience. It's definitely not. It's, it's, it's a group of awesome people that, you know, just love bringing smiles to people's faces, that love spreading, uh, you know, a little bit of happiness. And, and, you know, it's a message that's close to a lot of people's hearts. So. Uh, I think that's really amazing to, to be a part of this um, and, and to, you know, hopefully my one card possibly make, make a difference and hopefully make a difference and change history. I think, I think everybody's been to a concert, right? Where the, the energy just isn't there, right? The power of the performance isn't there. But if somebody said to you, oh, did they get any of the notes wrong? You'd say, no, I don't think so. I think they got the notes right. I just, I wasn't really moved for some reason. You know, I thought I would be. But I'm going to say in the cards I've seen, and obviously it's the four that have dropped already officially, right? But Mike and I have had a chance to see maybe 10 others that people have kind of, you know, showed us under the table or whatever, right? The cards that I've seen 
the artists are putting their heart and soul into these cards. They care so much about the campaign, right? This isn't something where somebody's like, oh, here's a chance to make a quick 30 bucks or 50 bucks. Let me just kind of mail it in and stamp Josh Gibson's name and put an MVP logo or something like that. Now you can see like there, the, the care that goes in, I'm gonna like make a weird reference here, but it was like, I, I watched this movie like 30 years ago called like Water for Chocolate, where like the person's food, uh, I think she was like a, a, you know, someone who lived in Mexico, but like her food was so incredible. It had magical powers and her secret ingredient was love. And I feel like these cards that the artists are making, they are just passionate about the campaign and it comes out in the cards and, you know, there are, um, Mr. Shake is one of my very favorite artists, but I got to say some of the talent lined up is like so sick <laughs> that like Mr. Shake and I are kind of like little leaguers compared to um, <laughs> some of the Hall of Famers that are going to come. Can I, can I hype two artists? Absolutely. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's go for okay. it. Let's see what we got. I could, give, I could give you big names. So Katad took Mr. Shake. We have artists who work for tops, right? Do projects for tops doing this campaign, not just judges making cards. We have artists whose work has been on the cover of Beckett, right? The Beckett Monthly or, or you know, all these things. We have them. I'm going to hype two artists that are a little more under the radar, less and less because their work is so good. Uh, and just I just grabbed a couple cards on my way up. Um, some of you maybe know Matthew Burke. Mm -hmm. I call this the wooden gooden. Um, this frame on the card or this border, I should say, on the card is actual wood, right? And if you were to look at it with a microscope or a magnifying glass, you couldn't even tell like where he made the cuts or where the seams are. His work is so impeccable. He makes really nice houses for people as kind of his nine to five, <laughs> right? The craftsmanship on his stuff is so ridiculously off the charts. The only thing I'm a little bit worried about, so challenge for, for Tad, Mr. Shake and I, is sometimes in a photograph, you don't even realize that it's like, you know, this wood overlay. So um, we've got to help him out with that. But his stuff is awesome. He and does then, great work. I know he reached out to Lauren Taylor and was going to do one of a Lou Gehrig card. I haven't seen it pop up yet, but I imagine it's to be awesome. He was just on Beckett Live earlier with Matthew Lee Rosen and Blake Jameson showing off a quadruple collab where the fourth collaborator was actually Mark McGuire. So, oh, um, no way. That's yeah, exactly. That's and it slabbed, and it slabbed yeah. by Beckett. Oh, wow. I think I told him like eight months ago, dude, you're about to go through the roof, right? Well, I think he is, but anyway, so he's in. And um, another person that I just came to know maybe a month ago, but his stuff is ridiculous. He's yet another Jason, so okay, Team Jason. <laughs> I'll just go by Bubba. Like I said, I'm just Bubba. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, this is the, I'm trying to kill the reflection. Sorry, you guys, I'm bad at this. This is the Alex Pardee, Mike Trout. Mm -hmm. He hand painted over it to kind of turn it into a completely different scene, like Mike Trout kind of wading through lava or something like that with like a torch, right? I mean, if you look at it, you're like, oh, that's the party trout. Yeah, that was pretty dope. If you compare it, if you put the trout actually next to it, you'll see, oh my God, Jason did so many things to this. And it's all freaking hand painted direct onto the card. He's doing a card for Josh, right? Oh, gosh. So, yeah. so Matthew Burke and Jason Plona are just two artists that I think a lot of folks in the community aren't as familiar with as some of the big names we could say, like Josh Trout, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but their work is so crazy that if I were betting on a champion, like I might, I might go for some of these uh, dark horses. You know, I might just. Yeah, no, they do great. I think uh, Jamie Thomas is another person I saw said uh, he was interested. So uh, yeah. there are some serious card artists that are involved yeah. in this here. Scott Hodges, Jose Tellier. Oh, and yeah. If you all don't know Rob Scott, Rob with two Bs and, and Scott with two Ts, if you don't know Rob Scott, his pencil drawings are like the most insane thing I have ever seen. And he jumped in as well. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, so we have, we have some top talent going out there. <laughs> Not messing around. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I said, I'm looking forward to seeing the submissions that everyone does there. It, it's such a, a cool thing to do. I said, I, I'm, I'm good. I don't have the time to do more of my crappy card art myself. But <laughs> I'll leave it to you guys now. I, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> get it in. Get it in. I, I am currently in last place, right? Which, <laughs> which I mean, you know, I'll be bummed if I come in last for week one. If I come in last for the entire tournament, I'm going to be super bummed. So especially if you think your card's going to suck, 
please submit. I need- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to see. I think I have my stack of cards here now. But all right, yes. But yeah, no, I'll, I'll submit one out there. I definitely, uh, I've got one card I've been waiting to do. Uh, uh, from that Josh Gibson card. And uh, yeah, so let's see, I think I found it. Oh, it's right here. Anyways, I'll look for it later. Cool. Uh, let's see what time we got here. I, was, I know we're getting close up on an hour here. Um, any last things before we call it a night here? And uh, we'll get back there. Uh, and then we'll plug everyone's social media before we go. I, w- I want to say this. Um, I, I love the fact that the, the, you know, the, the, this campaign and, and, and this community that we're, we're building and the kinds of campaigns that we run are absolutely meant to feel grassroots. Um, But I would say that they are uh, organized, strategically organized grassroots campaigns. In our, and, and, you know, I, I have a long background in brand advertising and marketing. That's where I come from. And my belief is that the world can be saved with marketing dollars. That if the biggest advertisers in the world started to recognize the value of putting their money, their marketing dollars directly in areas of need within our communities, instead of spending their money trying to just convince us how great they are, If they put their money into these areas of need, like the Josh Gibson Foundation, like the Buck Leonard Association, like the Jackie Robinson Foundation, if they put their money there, their marketing dollars, their actual marketing dollars, not their donations, then we could make a big difference in this world. And the value that we're creating with these campaigns is substantial for advertisers. In the first NLBM art campaign, and we are going to far exceed these numbers. In the first NLBM art campaign that ran September to October, the sum total of our participants, which was over 100 artists at that point, posted enough times to create over a billion impressions. And that's the opportunity for, for a post to be seen by a user, the opportunity not necessarily the full number, but over a billion, the opportunity for them. So grassroots, yes. A shitload of marketing value, absolutely. And we want sponsors. We want big sponsors. We want those dollars to go right to work in these areas of need um, in the communities that the Gibson Foundation, the Buck Leonard Association are vigilantly working on and have been for decades. That's what we're all about. Actually, one thing I forgot to ask you guys, are the cards for sale? (laughs) (laughs) uh, Yeah, Yeah, that's that's the great thing. We have a a great mechanism um, where all of the artists get a chance to submit their artwork for a certificate of authenticity. Um, And it looks like the great majority, uh, maybe only a few won't be for sale after the campaign. So definitely look out for that. And you're going to pick them up directly from the artists. And um, in return for that certificate of authenticity, the artists are going to be donating a minimum of 20% of their their retail sales to the JGF. I'll just add to that. I've heard from a lot of artists. They're just going 100%. Yeah, most of them will. That's happened last time too. I've heard about a lot of hundreds. So, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Man, it's kind of hard to um, to speak after Tad in terms of a last word. <laughs> yeah. Next time we'll leave Tad for last. All yeah. right. I don't know if I've got anything with billions in it, man. But, um, yeah, if, if I've got 30 seconds on the mic, only because I'm still in last place, but the card <laughs> is on the clock. Okay, y'all. <laughs> Go to nlb mart on twitter and if you see my card give it a like give it a (laughs) read what is it what does it take it yeah vote vote right um it only takes a minute i happen to know there is at least one gentleman on this call tad who has not liked or (laughs) 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 retweeted. hey 
I've been busy, man. I've been making more <laughs> images and trying to create a website. Right. All right. Yeah. I'll get on social media tonight. <laughs> and definitely, you know, maybe maybe I shouldn't say this. I'm definitely not looking to win the tournament, but I kind of don't want to finish last. All That's right. all. So please, uh -huh. I need I need your votes, man. <laughs> your votes. I tell you what, we'll we'll have a competition with me and you. We'll see who does it best better. Because I think I'm coming <laughs> in last place. So. <laughs> If, if, if somebody were to just grab the, the bottom of the standings, they'd be like, you are all your artists named Jason. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Mike, last word before we go. Uh, no, this is just an awesome experience. It's a great community. I'm so happy to be a part of it. And uh, you know, I thank all the artists and everyone who's working even behind the scenes, putting everything together, Tad and Jason, everyone else <laughs> as, he, as he's voting. Uh, it, it really is. I'm awesome, gonna get you so. too. I'm gonna get you too, Mike. All right, thank you. <laughs> we gotta keep the sequel opportunity. That's right. I've got like three followers in my Twitter. <laughs> yeah. If, that's what I all right, you each just got you each just got a vote. My wife was like, "You don't really want me to retweet. I only have 50 people." I go, "No, I get three points for a retweet. It doesn't matter how many followers." <laughs> yeah. I'm down by 100. Show us how many accounts you created, please, Jason, on Twitter right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I do own three accounts, right? Um, in truth, in truth, I have only used my main Heavy J28. I have not, um, yeah. Yeah, I have not yet gone to the burners. Or, you, know, uh, you haven't gone to the point where you spent $5 on Twitter advertising to really post your thing out there. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. Sponsor your post, man. If yeah, you sponsor win, your post. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, but I am, if I'm still down by like 100 um, by the time I hang up here, right, I am going to probably record a promo video for my card. <laughs> oh, are you going to sing again? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna see what I'm gonna see what happens. Here's advice to other artists who haven't gone yet, and so Bubba, that could include you. Um, Tad, do you, are you doing a card? I think you are, right? You know, I probably will. I don't think I'll yeah. officially enter it. I want to, you know, let everybody else, but I'll probably do something <laughs> for fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna give. I'm just. I decided. You know what, man? Like uh, Mike and Andy and Patrick have already gone. It'll be messed up if the dude who goes on Thursday kind of breaks the whole competition with something. So I, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. But I thought to myself, what if I posted and I'm like, hey, everybody, make sure you like and retweet. Um, I'm going to be selecting one of the retweeters to actually win the card. Like, it's just yours. I'll give it to you for free. And I'll make a donation to the JGF, right? And I thought, you know, at some point, if that starts happening, if there's like incentives and prizes and things associated i think it extends the reach so it's a win for everybody but i thought to myself it feels a little you know as a <laughs> to just sort of change the whole outline on a thursday it didn't seem right so i'm not going to do that um but but i do think there's a future for that sort of promotion as well yeah let's get ruthless yeah. <laughs> let's just let let everybody go and let's just see who gets most creative <laughs> who wants it the most <laughs> Brilliant. What's the grand prize? Do we know? Do we even know what a grand prize is? We're gonna we're gonna be doing some weekly T-shirts, right, for winners. Yeah, um, the, we the winners are gonna get a T-shirt. Yeah, Josh Gibson T-shirt for the uh, weekly winners, and we're gonna unveil the grand prize uh, in a little bit. We just cementing the final details. Now, now, Tad, as you know, the grand prize is Josh's name on the trophy. It's yeah, absolutely right, hundred sure. percent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Guys, thanks so much for coming on. Um, stick around after we close the stream here. Uh, we're going to wrap something up real quick. We need to five minutes of your time there. Um, but brilliant. Where could everyone find you guys there? So we obviously we already know where you find the Twitter account there. But what about your personal accounts? Give me a shout out where we can find you on Twitter. I'm on uh, Mr. at Mr. Shake Card Art on both Twitter and Instagram or Mr. Shake Card Art .com to see some of my past work. Um, I, I got a few different ones. I apologize, world. But uh, the website is heavyjstudios.com. Instagram, I'm not there as often, but it's heavyjstudios. Twitter, though, it's heavyj28. And Ted, you want to give a shout out for where we're going to find all the information? Yeah. Um, so follow along on Twitter for this campaign at MLB. Uh, NLBM Art. Um, Mike and Jason are hosting there and they're doing a great job. Um, NLBM Art on uh, 
Twitter and Instagram, uh, noBMart.com. Um, every Friday we'll be um, releasing um, each week's cards there as well. I'm trying to work out some bugs right now and, um, and have some voting there as well. Um, so opportunities to vote both on Twitter with your likes, shares, comments, and physically on nlbmart.com every Friday through Sunday, they'll be voting. Um, personally, you can follow me at, at uh, soto.mofo or at Curveball Keepsakes. Brilliant. All right, guys, thanks again there. Everyone that watched on Facebook, we see you there. Thanks for the shout outs and, and catching up in there. Uh, this will be on a podcast as soon as I can get John to do it for me so we can get that out that way. And we'll see you guys back the usual slot on Tuesday. It was my own fault. Uh, I had a COVID jab and it completely threw the couple of days off for me, but I'm feeling better now. So, all right, guys, take care. Good on you. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thank you.